I, I was not intending to go there at all. I'm like, oh, well, this is interesting. Let's go there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, the only thing we left out of that is that the, the, the is that the green people don't like apple. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah. We never we never talked about. That. Well, we talked about that. We were that's they don't like them because they're using coal. I, I'm sorry. Uh, today, coal is is one of our most usable power sources. We just it. It is what it is. I, I would love for us to have alternatives, but not because they make the hippy dippy green pe people happy, but because we need them. <laughs> we need sustainable energy to keep this planet going, at least the way we, we live today. Uh, I'm one who personally does think that uh, global warming and other changes in our environment that can mess up, you know, the Earth's natural processes is a danger so that's one of the reasons it needs to change but the, yeah, the question that. is how much of that is being done by humans versus how much of that is being done by things that are entirely beyond the control of humans yeah I, 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 I agree regardless we need to better understand that system and learn how to manipulate it because uh, we're, we're in interglacial right now which means Earth's going to get way colder at some point, and we've seen from the fossil record, she's going to get way hotter, which means we as human beings need to learn how to... It. Right now, we're operating under the false delusion that we have control of our environment. I would rather we were focusing on learning how to react to our environment to survive. <laughs> you don't think that humans will ever get powerful enough that we could change the global environment on a whim? In theory, with the right technology, we could. I'm hoping we grow up a lot more before we get that gift because uh, right now, what we would do with the environment would not be in our own best interest. <laughs> I mean, think what we would do with the weather if we had control over it and think of the long-term effects of that. <laughs> yeah, it, it would not help us or the planet too well. Because, I mean, nobody wants hurricanes, tornadoes, typhoons, just, but they're actually very beneficial to the planet in some ways. Okay. <laughs> what are we moving into? Pick one, I don't care. Alright. Uh, what is this? GOP primary length is hurting fundraise what does that mean uh, yeah this one's kind of weird um it hasn't been said directly it's more been an indirect observation but basically the democratic presidential campaign aka the obama campaign has realized that their ability to do fundraising is hindered by the fact that the republican primary process isn't over yet because essentially, instead of fighting one opponent, they're currently waging a campaign against two to four. So the fundraising, instead of being split between a Republican candidate and a Democratic candidate, is split between a Democratic candidate and up to four Republican candidates. And whatever independents are going to decide they're going to try and raise funds to make a, a, a bite at the apple. So, you know, there is only so much money to go around to be fundraised, and the fact that it's being split more ways than two, maybe three, diminishes the pool that they can pull on. And, it, and they've, they've, you know, the, it, indirectly the people running that side of the Obama campaign have made complaints and observations about that. Uh, Barack Obama himself has made no such statement. Uh, the, if you listen to the way the um, pro-Republican, it's like, oh, we have to save the country from Obama people are presenting that. It's like, oh, Obama's afraid of the Republicans, Obama's afraid. Like, no, no, this is the section of his campaign that is in charge of raising and doing fundraisers, and, you know, they acknowledge the economic fact. If there's only $100 in the economy and you're splitting it five ways, as opposed to two ways, you're going to get less money. <laughs> Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, to be perfectly honest. Uh, 
Uh, you know, because I mean, right now it's looking like the Republican stuff's going to go on till May. So we're not going to know for sure who the Republican candidate. It, it's going to be Obama versus somebody, but we're not. The earliest we're going to have an idea who that is is into May, possibly midsummer, depending how the votes carry out. Because they need a they need a majority vote for it to end then. Otherwise, we have to get into all the extra people who wouldn't usually vote but have to be the tiebreakers. What about you? You think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. I think that uh, it's good to have. Uh Lots of decisions and not deciding too quickly who should be the candidate. I, 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 I don't, I don't it, find that as a bad thing. In principle, I agree with that. However, I, you know, the U.S. in some ways is hurt by the fact that our election cycle is so long. Because, I mean, I, this is the longest one we've ever had. And, and that. It, no, uh, uh, not in terms of some, but in, in terms of how long we've been in election season. And, some, and, and, and in part, that is due to Barack Obama, because he he started his campaign for re-election earlier than any president in the history of the United States has. In, in term, most of them wait until we're in election season. He started well beforehand. So, I, I don't know if that was smart or dumb, but it's basically made this the longest election season in the history of the United States, because we're going to be in election season until we actually have election day. Um, uh, our primary isn't necessarily, it's not, it is definitely one of our most publicized ones uh, that we've had in record, which is also adding to the length. Usually, this is not carried with such... Um, there are not this many debates between this many candidates, between, it's just, it's, it really shows how divided the United States is right now. The United States is at this point where it can go one of two directions on a number of issues. And about a third of the country wants to go one way, about another third wants to go another way, and the other third of the country isn't really sure which way suits them best. And that's why we're having this. I, I, I agree with you. I think it's a good thing to discuss it as much as possible. But at the end of the day, we, on many things, whether it's how we handle the economy, how we handle what the government does, how we handle um, what rights and liberties people have, how we handle all the sub-issues like we were talking about in the last part from energy to not to everything. We are at a, at, a, at a point on dozens of these issues where we can commit to one path or the other. And as a country, we don't agree on which one's best, which is kind of the way it's always been in the U.S. I think it's one of our strengths. But I, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say which way's right. <laughs> okay, let's talk about religion. It's the political issue. Oh, dear. <laughs> I wish we had a more diverse group base for this. Ah, uh, okay. Primary talk, and that's one of the issues we're actually divided on in this country, actually. Uh, primary talking points, you know, the polarizing views are we need to get God out of the country, we need to put God back into the country. Those are about as polar opposite as you can get. <laughs> um... You know, on the one hand, you have people who think there isn't enough God in America. Uh, usually, though not always, this is centered in the United States of America around the idea of good Christian values. I put that in parentheses not to be disrespectful, but to just state the fact of the United States is primarily Christian and the United States of America as a whole does not agree on what good Christian values are. So it, it belongs in quotations. Uh, on the flip side, you have people who aren't Christian for various reasons. Uh, and you also have other 
uh, Abrahamic God-following paths who believe that the country is too Christian, but it needs God in it, but it needs their point of view of God. You know, it's like it's like a, the Christian point of view is too represented, and the and the non-Christian point of views of God aren't represented enough. And then you have people who don't follow who don't follow the paths of the Abrahamic God, who want God out of the country and government, so that they are better represented. There isn't a right answer on this, uh, but it both sides are definitely heated. I mean, you have stuff like group people in the anonymous campaign attacking churches because they feel they're the evil of the country. You know, that's uh, people who desperately want um, God removed from the oath of truth, the oath of allegiance, and the money. Uh, and likewise, you know, the reverse. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's simultaneously in this country. You tell me what you think. Simultaneously in this country, we have the the two main talking heads in this seem to be the we need to be a good Christian nation versus the I'm an atheist and you have to be an atheist like me because I'm right. That's a generalization, just like saying all Christians want to go get rid of all the homosexuals. It, it is a generalization. Right. But you know the ones I'm talking about, the ones who just live to be offended and remind everybody that how dare you believe in a God that doesn't exist. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, and there, there's a lot of... Uh, it's... They talk about, well, should it be in schools? You know, well, uh, should it be on the dollar? Should it be in the Pledge of Allegiance? How, what is freedom of religion? You know, why should God not be taught in schools? And why should evolution should and stuff like that? Well, you could say, okay, you could only teach things in schools that follow the scientific method and are viewable and uh, re, uh, in a sense, uh, reproducible. And you could see the effects of it, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, but uh, where, where, where is it? You know, uh, Which part, say that again? So, like, what... Where is that imaginary line? Is that what you were asking? Of religious freedom. Should, should people, you know, should God be taught in school? Should it be on the dollar? Should it be in the pledge of allegiance? How, you know, uh, what is, you know, yeah. Well, I can only state my personal opinion on that, and my personal opinion, uh, based on many other people's personal opinion, would be a direct violation of their First Amendment right, and this is why this is such a heated issue uh, in the United States of America. Um, my personal opinion is sharing your culture with your fellow human beings is not a crime. If kids happen to be diverse, if they happen to be, some of them Christian, some of them Muslim, some of them pagan, some of them Jew, some of them atheist, agnostic, and anything else I'm forgetting to name, like Buddhist, Hindu, yada yada. They're friends, they're with their peer groups. I don't necessarily think it's wrong for them to share their culture and the way they believe and they do things at home with their friends and their peers. I'm not saying they should walk around saying, you have to agree with me. As a matter of fact, most people would stop being friends after an ultimatum like that. You know, that it, it basically be presenting the ultimatum, if you want to be my friend, you have to think like me, and if they don't, they're not gonna be friends anymore. But I don't think that's wrong. That's my personal opinion. And I think our country would be benefited greatly from letting our children do that, even if mommy and daddy don't necessarily disagree. 
It's a difference between preaching and just being honest about who you are and what you believe and sharing all of yourself with your friends and peers. Uh, the approach we've taken, because it makes mommy and daddy uncomfortable, and I agree, there is potential First Amendment violations because then what's going to happen is little Billy, Sue, or little, little Billy, little Sue, Peggy, and Jimmy are going to come home to mommy and go, my best friend told me this is the way it is. And mommy and daddy are going to have to explain, no, they're wrong. This is the way it is. Uh, and that, that, that is the inevitable situation that come out of that, and I agree, that's exactly what I saw it. I personally um, respect people's ability to make up their mind for themselves. So, should the school be allowed to say that, you know, our religion is wrong? Because, I mean, no. not, not directly, but in the sense teaching evolution does uh, say. Well, you know, evolution, big bang, te teaching science, especially when it contradicts with uh, religious doctrine, is going to be a rub on this planet until there aren't any more humans. <laughs> uh, 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 but um, I, I personal my and again this is my personal opinion because it's my personal path. I personally have no objection to the pursuit of truth. I have an objection to the presentation of conclusion that is not necessarily truth as truth. I actually have the exact same problem with a, a Christian fundamentalist coming in and telling me I have to ignore everything which implies evolution because Genesis says otherwise, as I do with an atheist coming in and telling me I have to ignore all theological conclusions that don't jive with their conclusion of there is no God. Because they can no more prove 100% their statement than the other one. And I, I honestly never personally seen these two diametrically opposite things as at war with each other. Why they continue to want to war with each other is beyond my comprehension. But if you actually go and study them both, they can live rather kindly and nicely with each other. One focuses on uh, the fa uh, on the, the the how the other focuses on the why uh, and I think they can live along with each other rather well uh, personally whatever you're teaching uh, 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 although this is this creates an issue with evolution if you're going to teach religion in school I'm not saying we necessarily need a hi this is your introduction to Christianity course in the in the school system no I think that's the job of the church <laughs> it, it, yeah, that's the job of Sunday school or, or whatever your religion however your religion conveys your religious views that's that's the job of the church not the school um, but I don't think it should necessarily be fully and totally excluded either you know because especially when you're studying history religion plays a big part and understanding the motivations and interactions of humans over the millenniums. So, yeah. should parents be able to take their kids out of school during when the school talks about say evolution? My okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna state the laws of the United States, and I'm gonna state my personal opinion. My personal opinion is no because they're handicapping their kid uh, and understanding a concept. However, the laws of the United States are we have First Amendment rights and even if I think they're dead wrong, if it's a direct violation of the teachings they're trying to do their kids, short of causing them physical harm, they are allowed to hinder their growth as much as they want. I think it's a disservice to their kids, but they are allowed to do it which means I think that decision should not be an ironclad rule for the country as a whole, but made by the individual districts. The individual districts should choose whether the subject is compulsory or optional. It's the exact same thing we do with sex ed. You know, your parents have to sign the waiver, and if your parents don't sign the waiver, but all districts, that isn't the case. In some districts, the waiver isn't necessary. 
as long as you leave the decision up to the individual districts, or if people don't agree with the school system, they're allowed to go elsewhere. Uh, the, the benefit of the law, and regardless of my personal conclusions and philosophies, is satisfied. All right. Uh, what about you? Same question. Same questions, actually, because I've been the only one answering them. As far as what? Uh, do, do you think it should? Do you think if it's taught, it should be compulsory? Do you think it should be taught? Do, do, do you do you think it should be completely ignored? Do you think it I should? I think it should be taught because it's a as evolution, not necessarily for the creation of humans, but as a process of nature does happen. You know, we could view it uh, evolution happening, and I think it's important that that gets taught. Whether it gets taught that it created humans, you know, uh, maybe that should be optional. But evolution as a scientific process needs to be taught. Yeah, well, and see, that's the thing. People think when you're teaching evolution, uh, I still want you to answer the religious question, but I'm going to comment on that real quick. People think when you're teaching religion, excuse me, when you're teaching uh, evolution, uh, and I don't know if this is ignorance or just people wanting to make mountains out of molehills. They think you're teaching that the Bible is wrong and Genesis is bullshit. Yeah. And nothing in teaching evolution says that at all. What evolution says, if you teach it at its most fundamental, is that uh, genetics mutate, life forms change. And that your descendants are not carbon copies of you, and over time this leads to diversity. Yes. That is all evolution teaches. Evolution does not teach anything else besides that. Now, there are people who take evolution well, to an extent. taught in schools. It does also teach, saying that humans do come from this lineage, and that's the part that gets in the way of religion. Uh, how? I, I, I've, I've read every version of Genesis there is. I see no version of the Holy Bible, Torah, or Quran that says God created man, or man and woman, or however, how, whatever reading of it you're signed, physiologically exactly as they exist today in the year 2012. Well, so I... God created humans in his image that would imply that God's image would have to change as time goes on no why not I, okay God created man in his image um, that that didn't say I that doesn't say identical that doesn't say man is still I, uh, identical to God's image. Uh, it, it, none of this is. These are all things that are implied, but not said anywhere in the Bible. It's hmm. an interesting point. You know, yeah, a lot of religious people do believe that God did create the process of evolution and then let its things take a course. But anyway, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. What like, other like I said, these two stories are not at war with each other. They want to be, but if well, you go by the letter of both, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> I don't see why they don't live why they don't live nicely with each other. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> I, I I think. So here's here's a part that does disagree. So if said God created man, mm -hmm. unless you are implying that God created the original bacteria, uh, that therein lies a problem because evolution in some way when they're teaching it in schools not necessarily the theory of evolution says this but the way they teach it says that the first life came from this bacteria and then mutated to become this and this and this that would uh, defy because it's, it, it implies that this things uh, basically happened without God God didn't create this frog so unless 
Well, like I said, there are people who can take that to that way, but that's not the actual science of evolution. Right. But that's the way I was taught, and that's the way that my friends were taught, and I'm in Silicon Valley. You know, it's not that they're teaching. I don't think it's ignorant. I think that that's it, it's an interesting way to explain it. They don't say, you know, they say that this is something that could happen. You know, this is how uh, the cell wall could be formed and how they split and mutate and. And, and you know what, that is honestly, you're hitting on the issue. If you dig into the science of our primordial planet, and we have plenty of scientific research on this and so forth, you, you come across a gap and that we know scientifically this happened, we know this happened, we know this happened, we know these things happened, and we have this hole and which that whole is either natural processes that we don't understand led to a chaotic series of events that created circumstances that were right for the following things to occur, which then led to this, 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 and that. But we don't know that. That's a theorem. Solution two. An outside entity or something set things into motion to create the circumstances that allowed this, 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 and this to do this. At the end of the day, both are a matter of faith, and regardless of which it is, if you're a person of faith and you believe in God and you believe God is the source of all things, that you believe that these natural processes which occurred were the creation of God and God's will. Which means it's still God that did it. If you are a person with no faith in, no faith in God, you don't believe in God, you believe all things are random chaos, then this is just natural random chaos of our universe that allowed these things to occur. If, if you're a person who doesn't believe in God and it was an outside entity that created the thing, well, the aliens came and deposited things, and you know, it's like, it, it, and there are plenty of athe uh, atheist agnostic people that believe there was an intelligent force behind, but it was just some alien, some older civilization that got us going. At, at the end of the day. There's a lot of things there that are not so easy. I've heard uh, my girlfriend, there's like this one, it's like, the, like Transpermia or something like that. This theory where basically uh, this civilization would uh, basically give frozen life uh, that's similar to them uh, and would just send it out into the atmosphere hoping it would hit a planet. Yeah, seeding planet theory, yeah. Yeah, and so that, that's something interesting too. You know, what will that, an asteroid hits, it contains a uh, uh, a germ that state uh, being frozen and gets unfrozen and starts to, you know. So there's there's a lot of things, and the fact is that's not much more crazy than it just randomly uh, generating than than just random chaos generating life. Once you go back that far, so what that is so unobservable, uh, it really does become a matter of faith. So yeah. Yeah, well, and the reality is, like I said, you know, we just went over the basic scenarios, and both of them, depending on your faith, your point of view, what you believe, are fully supported. The diametrically opposite points of view that seem to clash for eternity, both, both surviving rather nicely with each other, regardless of what the facts are. So. <laughs> Else you want me to answer, or do we want to move to the next thing? Uh, I, I think there was. Oh, um, yeah, the, the one other point. It, it, we, we, we got off on a religious thing because that's what you were talking about. Uh, uh, real quick, do you think we should ban religion from, from schools or allow it? Explain. Well, right now, our official stance is a quote-unquote separation of church and state, which isn't anywhere actually in the Constitution. It's in letters written by one of our founding fathers, uh, which we, in which we imply there has to be a ban on expression of religion in the school system. And that's why, you know, if uh, a, an after-school activity, you know, advertises for a prayer group and an atheist is offended, the prayer group sign comes down. Uh, and, and likewise, if a... If, if a 
if a, a, a Christian doesn't want to see a, a, a Wiccan pentagram or a, or a Muslim thing, it's like, oh, no, oh, okay, it's banned, it's religion, it's bad. It, 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 do you agree the full-on ban is the right approach, or do you agree the it should be allowed, but everybody's allowed? I think it should be everyone's allowed. Okay. I, I think that people should form as many, you know, clubs are great. I think that, you know, it, it's it's more than just the religion. It's about making friends. So I think people should be able to form a skeptics club or a, or a, a Muslim club or stuff like that. And they're all very nice people. I've been to a Muslim club because uh, one of my best friends is uh, is Muslim, and I've been to Christian clubs too. And the, none of them are talking bad about other people. Uh, they're just being friends with the people that are there. Uh, so it's really I, I don't see a problem with that. People, part of being human is choosing. Uh, what you want to influence you. Uh, yeah, and that tends to be where, where I lean on that. But yeah, it's uh, so. Yeah, I I, I, w I I wish that's what we did. I think we'd be better off. 